A common thing for in-person live events is to have a big timer either at the back of the room or down below the stage like next to a confidence monitor so that the presenter can at a glance make sure that they're within their allotted time if they need to speed up or slow down. Um, at physical in-person conferences, I've even been on stage and had an analog experience like this. Rather than a digital timer, there was a person at the back who would hold up a sign when I had five minutes left, or they would hold up a sign saying, wrap it up, you're over time. And uh, that was really helpful to kind of keep the presenters on track and keep the flow of the show running. Now, in the big shift to virtual events, we've kind of lost that ability to easily keep our presenters on track. A lot of people go over their allotted time or they get nervous and they speak too fast and they're kind of, you know, going a little bit too quickly through their content. And it would be really helpful if we could figure out a way to bring that back of room digital timer onto their screen so that they could keep track and we could kind of keep the show running at the pace that um, that we planned for. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that in a Microsoft Teams live event using OBS Studio virtual cameras and a really cool tool that I found from John Barker at Here to Record called StageTimer.io. Now, a bit of a disclaimer up front. This is a kind of an advanced tutorial. Um, to pull this off, you're going to need OBS Studio and you're need, going to need to be pretty familiar with uh, Teams live events. I'm, I'm going to go through it click by click, but I'm not going to explain too much about the concept of live events or how to set up OBS Studio. We're just going to assume that, you know, you know how to use OBS and you've done some Teams live events. Um, this is definitely an opportunity, though, to step up your live production skills. So uh, I hope you stick with me and we can do something cool over here. Okay, so... For this video, I'm recording my big widescreen because I've got Megan over on one side and Alex over on the other. And in this scenario, we're going to have a Teams live event where Megan is the producer and Alex is the presenter. And we want to use a tool called stagetimer.io to, um, to keep Alex on track so he knows if he's running out of time. We're going to set up first the, uh, the live event, then we're going to set up the timer then we're going to put the timer into OBS and send that into Microsoft Teams as a virtual camera. So the first step is we're going to create the live event. So Megan is going to go. She's going to schedule this live event. So we're going to hit the button next to new meeting. We're going to go to live event. And let's say that this is a product launch. So we'll call this product launch for Contoso. And we're going to set this for uh, May 18th at like noon. So it's nice and in the middle of my calendar. We'll make it an hour long. And then we need to invite Alex to this live event, right? So we're going to add Alex as a presenter. So you can see here at the bottom, he's set as a presenter. Megan is the producer. It's a real, real small team here. We're going to hit next. This is a product launch. So we're going to go ahead and make it public. And then down at the bottom, I want to keep all these things, but I want to add a Q&A to it as well. Why not? I always add Q&As. Then we're going to schedule that. And now that the uh, live event is on the books, let's go set up our timer next. So Megan is going to go to a website. She's going to open up a browser here. And we're going to go to stagetimer.io. And the stagetimer.io, this is a tool that I learned about from John Barker at Here to Record. He has a short little video on his channel showing, you know, the basics of how to use it. And it's a really interesting tool. It's basically a big timer. You have a control room that you can configure, you know, um, a lot of things that you want to do. And you can create a timer without signing up for an account. Or you can set up an account and you can go through uh, their advanced uh, options so that you can pay. It's, uh, I think, a monthly fee. Yeah, you can pay like by an event so you can get 10 day access or you can just pay per month and just have a pro account um, to use indefinitely. So I'm not going to sign up for anything. I'm just going to use the free options. You get, you know, three messages you can put on screen. You get three timers that you can use um, and you can't customize it. If you want to customize or have more capabilities, you're going to go to the advanced option. But we're just going to do a basic timer here. So at... Uh, at uh, 1 o'clock p.m. on May 18th, 
We're going to have this timer start and we're going to do a welcome, a presentation, and then we're going to leave some time for Q&A, right? So I can set this to manual, but I'm just going to go ahead and set it to scheduled right here. And we're going to schedule it for noon, right? I made it noon, I think. So 12 o'clock PM. And then for the date, that's going to be May 18th. So it's going to start at that time. And then we're going to say, uh, let's say five minutes for a welcome. So we, we add it for five minutes. We hit timer and we do the welcome. And if you had more than one speaker, you could add a speaker here. So I could just type Alex. And this is kind of cool because it will show like who's doing what spot and it'll display that on screen, who should be talking when. We only have one presenter, so it doesn't really matter. Then we're doing what, an hour long presentation. So after the five minutes is up for the welcome, then we're gonna get into the meat of the presentation and let's do uh, 40 minutes for that. So we leave 15 minutes for like a live Q and A. So there's a 40 minute timer. This is the presentation. And of course, again, it's gonna be Alex giving that presentation. And what we can do is we can have it automatically go from the five minute timer down to the 40 minute timer by clicking on this button, hitting trigger and setting it to linked and hitting save. So now this is linked to the other timer. And then we'll add a final timer for Q and A. So we're gonna do um, Q and A. And this will be Alex and Megan because Megan's gonna you know, be pitching the questions to Alex. And we want that also to start automatically. We want it to just be linked to the time before it. So we've got our timer. We got the three sections here, uh, 40 minute presentation with a bumper on both ends. But the important one is this 40 minutes. This will tell Alex how much time he has left in his presentation in order to leave 10 minutes for Q and A. It will keep him on track so that we finish in one hour exactly. And Alex is going to see this screen over here. So there's multiple ways that you could share this. The, the most common way that you can get this to another person would be to share a link. So you can click the links at the top and you could send this view link right here. You could send that to your presenters and then tell them, hey, go to this link on your phone. You could even generate a QR code so they can scan it on your screen in like a, a pre-briefing or something. And then they can go to that. They could just have their phone propped up off screen and they could watch their timer. But that's kind of manual. They have to like, you know, watch it and they have to set it up and maybe they don't have multiple screens or whatever. So we're going to send this onto his screen through Microsoft Teams instead. But we are going to go ahead and copy this link because we want the view timer to be our virtual camera. So we're going to close out of this. We're going to go ahead and just minimize the stage timer. And then we're going to go into OBS for our next step. So we're in OBS. This is um, a little bit of, you know, the, the secret sauce, right? This is how I'm doing a virtual camera for all my videos. But I'm going to add a new scene in OBS. I'm going to call it timer. And then we're going to add a new source. And the source for this, because I have a link that I'm going to use, is I'm going to use the browser source in OBS Studio. And we're going to call this the stage timer. And then we're going to paste in the, um, the URL that we copied. So it's stagetimer.io. There's the room. That's going to be that view only link. And I believe, I think my stage here is set to 640 by 360, I believe. So we'll set that. We'll hit OK. There we go. So now I have the stage timer. It's loading up the room and it's ready to go. My next and last step for OBS, I don't need OBS after I click start virtual camera. So we're going to start that virtual camera and then I can just go ahead and right click over here and just hide OBS. That's going to be my webcam. Now what we're going to do is we're going to join this live event. Let's get this out of the way. So Megan's going to join that live event and she's going to use her OBS camera. So under video settings, the camera is going to be set to OBS virtual camera. And then this is kind of an interesting uh, new feature in Microsoft Teams. Originally, it's going to be flipped like this for the, the person. It's your self view is mirrored. There's a new button in Teams. You can unmirror your video. And then now it looks right to Megan. 
It's always going to look right to Alex, but it'll look right to Megan now. So we're going to hit OK, and we're going to join this meeting or this live event. And now we're joined into the live event. I'm going to go ahead and go to people, and then I'm going to invite Alex to join the live event as well so we can see the presenter's point of view right here. So over on Alex's side, we're going to accept the invite, and we're going to join into the live event because it's time for our show. We'll just pretend that it's Wednesday uh, at noon. Okay, so Alex has joined into the event. We're in the pre-live stage of this live event, and you see just the giant timer. So that's what, what Alex sees instead of Megan's face is he sees her timer right there. So no worries. He doesn't have to worry about what Megan's doing. He needs to worry about what he's going to say and what his presentation looks like. So he's just going to go into the meeting. He's going to share his screen. And then he's going to bring up his PowerPoint slide deck, right? Okay, so he's got PowerPoint open. He's just going to go ahead and start his slideshow. Now, from Microsoft Teams, you have this little picture-in-picture. Picture. You're probably used to this if you use Microsoft Teams for any extended period of time. When you share your screen, you have this little window so you can kind of see the meeting. You get a little bit of the, the controls there where you can stop, you can mute your microphone, things like that. Now, this shows on Alex's screen. But on all of your participants, when you're in a meeting and you share your monitor, you don't have to minimize this because this is actually transparent to the other end of your meeting. So if we go over here and we look at Megan's screen, Megan can go over here to add the split view in the Microsoft Teams live event. She can add the content, so she can add the shared screen. And then she can click here, she can add Alex, and now she's got Alex next to his content. And she can go ahead and send that to the live event and start the event. Now, what you'll notice is it's transparent to Megan. Over here in the corner, she doesn't see that timer. So Alex has this, this secret timer on his screen that he's the only one who can see. And it doesn't distract the audience. They don't know how much time is left. But he can stay on track. So Megan, she's going to go ahead and start this live event, right? We're going to continue, start the live event. She'll go over to the timer, and when it's time to get started, she'll just click the play button, and now the timer is counting down. 456, 455, you know, so on and so forth. Over here on Alex's screen, Alex now has a live timer counting down, and he can click through his presentation, but the audience isn't going to see that timer. So this is a really cool option for now you've delivered a timer to the far end presenter, but it's transparent to the audience. And he's got the big time in the middle. He's got this colored bar at the bottom. What this is, is it's how much time before the wrap up stage. So when he's approaching the one minute mark, it's going to change to orange. And then when he approaches the 15 second mark, then it will turn to red. And when he's out of time, the text will be red and it will show a negative and it will start counting up whenever he hits that, that allocated time. So if we go back over to Megan, we'll kind of simulate this. In the control room, I can take time away, right? So I'm going to take time away. He's within a minute, so it's now turn orange. And then I'm going to take away 30 seconds so that he's within 15 seconds. Now it is turned red. So we're getting really close to the end, and then we'll see what happens whenever we hit the zero time. Okay, so he ran out of time. It's linked to the next section, so we've just started the next timer. If this was unlinked, then he would, she would have to click like manual. She'd have to click the next section when he wraps it up. So depending on how good your presenter is with like their rehearsal, you may want to link or not link your timers here. Um, something that we can do though is if Alex is going like too fast and he's like halfway through his slide deck, we can send him a message. So we can tell him up here in the corner, we can say slow down and we can show that. And then over on Alex's screen, it's changed over to the time has gotten a little bit smaller, but it says slow down. 
From Megan's perspective, I can even click the flash button in the upper corner and I can make that text flash for him to kind of like get get his attention. I can even make the text red if I want to and then flash it as red text. Something that's really handy about this is you could use this to tell Alex how many questions you have. So say that we get to the Q&A section. We're on the Q&A section. I can tell Alex we have three questions and hit show. Hit show to update it. And now I, he knows that there's three questions. And I can update that in real time by saying two questions are available. When I click off of it, it updates that text automatically. And now he knows how many questions there are coming up. And he's got nine and a half minutes to answer two questions in his presentation. And the whole time, the audience doesn't see this. You can see over here in the live screen. So I've got a third person here. I want to show what it looks like from the public attendees perspective. So we're going to go over here to Microsoft Teams. We're just going to grab this event and we're going to copy the link to it. So we're going to expand this open. Then we're going to get the attendee link, right? So we're going to connect over here to Adele's computer. This is Adele now. And she's going to go into her browser and she's going to paste that attendee link right here. And we're going to see what it looks like for the audience. So she can go ahead and open up Microsoft Teams. Sure. It opens up the live event, takes over the, the Teams interface here. And then she sees the Q&A over here on the side so she can ask a question. That's great. And this is what she sees from her perspective. So if I close the Q&A, see Alex over here to the side. You see his presentation. If he's clicking through his slides, you don't see his timer on his screen. So let's slide over. This is what Alex's screen looks like. He sees that there's two questions. He has seven and a half minutes left. Um, he's just giving his presentation. It looks transparent to the audience. So this is a just a really cool trick that I wanted to share with you guys um, to let you know of this tool called stagetimer.io. Using OBS with a browser source, send it into Teams as a virtual camera. And then because of that awesome feature in Teams where you don't see the little picture-in-picture -picture control deck, um, you've, you've placed it on a screen without having to show the audience how much time is remaining. So I hope this helps out. Keep an eye on it. If you're a present or if you're a producer and you see that on screen, just let Alex know, Hey, you know, this feature is not working right now. Uh, tell him to minimize it, you know, and, and then you can kind of hide that self view. So this is just a little trick for, uh, both presenters and producers, uh, to, to level up a little bit. So I hope this helped. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Let me know other cool things that you are looking for, um, how to solve certain challenges with Teams Live events, and uh, maybe we can find some, some awesome utilities together. Thanks for watching.